video, I'm going to talk to you guys about the IFAC or also the SAC. So uh, this is uh, obviously for individual first aid kit or what I also like to call a self-aid kit. So this is one thing you can grab. You can uh, pull it from around your back area and uh, get to work on yourself if nobody else is able to get to you at the moment or you have time or whatever, whatever your situation may be. So if you're bringing a, a gun uh, to your WROL scenario, say you're a militiaman, a man, a man, an armed citizen, and you're using firearms to be prepared to protect yourself, if you're prepared to give fire, be prepared to receive fire. And part of receiving fire is taking casualties. Sorry to say that's the reality. So anyways, uh, I'm just going to show you a little bit of my setup for my, you know, militiaman wannabe setup. So, anyways, here you go. Got the Alice IFAC pouch. And inside, I am hiding a lanyarded old school Alice, uh, or no, not Alice, but ACU or uh, a UCP, I guess you could say, the gray crap uh, insert for the IFAC. So, anyways, I'm using a piece of boot lace uh, to actually lanyard it. And here in the insert, it's a little bit different than what you'll find in the army kit because I am a civilian. I have access to probably better gear than most army units are going to have, but I am missing a few things that some people will say I absolutely need. Well, here's the thing. Most of the stuff that you're carrying in your IFAC in the military is because you're expecting to actually get medevaced and get better care. If you're preparing for WROL or um, you're preparing for shit to hit the fan, I, most of this stuff is just really going to buy you time. Uh, the idea of healing up, getting treated on the battlefield, and then evacuating to um, heal up and get back in the fight, that's a little over-optimistic. So anyways, uh, you can have whatever fantasies you want, um, but you know, for me, this is how I'm preparing. So we'll start from this way and... Go from there. So this isn't the only bit of medical uh, gear that I have on me. Uh, on in my chest pockets, I have two cat tourniquets. These, this is a training tourniquet. I use this to uh, practice getting uh, getting on my limbs and seeing how long it takes me to do things one handed, two handed, you know, whatever, and get back in the fight. So, anyways, uh, then on my left cargo pocket or whatever cargo pocket. I have an Israeli bandage. And then, of course, my magazine pouches have extra stuff, which we'll go into. But anyways, first things first is this right here. This is a C-Lox uh, granule applicator and plunger set. So this is for, you know, like the pelvic area or the shoulder area. Uh, if your artery is hit and a tourniquet can't get to it, uh, you find the artery, use your finger, find the artery, and then... Uh, Plug it in there, inject the uh, powder or the granules in there, and pull out as you're injecting, and then get some gauze on there and put pressure on. And for, you know, they say like a minute, between one and five minutes, you know, whatever. So, yeah, you decide uh, on that one, and the situation will obviously dictate because you still have to, you have to still stay in the fight and you still have to, you know, be alert. So it's up to you when this starts coming into play. So uh, next thing is obviously you, you might have teammates that can help you with that as well because you should be getting treated out of your own IFAC for the most part. Uh, but anyways, <clears throat> next one is the Aleus Bandage. This is just a 4-incher. I don't have the 6-incher. I know uh, the bigger it is, the more capabilities it has. But this thing, these things come standard with extra gauze, an occlusive layer, and also the pressure pad acts as an eye cup. So this is incredibly versatile. So uh, it's not only like having an Israeli bandage, but it's like having also extra stuff, extra gauze, an occlusive layer, and an eye cup. And the only thing it's lacking is duct tape, which I already have covered uh, in this back sleeve here. Roll of duct tape in case I need to use that occlusive layer so it's really easy to get to. So, yeah, I would, I would spend a little extra dough to get the Oleus, um, just a little bit more versatility. Here I have Chido gauze, and it uses Chidozin, it's not like the combat gauze, uh, which, and this does, this does show up on x-rays. So, <clears throat> here we go, where's it, where's it even set? There we go. So, 
It's detectable by x-rays. And this is Chattagaz XR Pro. I got this from Dark Angel Medical, if any of you are interested. So, that's my hemostatic gauze. And then I have two compact high fin chest seals, which I, uh, these are vented. I highly recommend vented chest seals. You don't need to add another, uh, you don't have to do a needle decompress. Uh, you can also burp the wound if you have to use this occlusive uh, dressing. And it's not one of those tape three sides situations. It's actually tape the four sides, but uh, the four faces each get to vent. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's the way you do it. Like if this is the if this is the actual occlusive dressing, then you tape here, 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 and here, and that way this thing can vent and you know decompress itself uh, all the way around. So, yeah, there. Some of the old, some of the manuals uh, that are still teaching combat medicine are still kind of behind. They haven't uh, updated that stuff yet. So, anyways, this right here is a thermal blanket. If any of you have taken any kind of medical course, you understand that if you're losing blood, which this is a blood stop, uh, stop the bleed kit, really, uh, you can get hypothermia because you don't have enough blood in your system, and uh, yeah, your uh, functions start. Uh, shutting down somewhat when you start losing a good amount of blood so obviously you can go into hypothermia and uh, you can get hypovolemic shock and stuff like that so yeah just uh, be prepared be a little boy scout shall we so that's that for this little you know self-aid kit my sack and I'll just put that away later so well, I'll do it now, whatever. It's not that hard to do, you just gotta manipulate it properly. So, all these pouches are together pretty tight because I have a pistol on here. So, everything is crammed. I'm not gonna be able to do this with a Molly system. So, anyways, let's go ahead and talk about my mag pouches since I already talked about what's on my person two tourniquets and an Israeli bandage. So, in each of these mag pouches, I have. 308 mags. I have two 308 mags. Usually these are these 20 rounders are sitting pretty low, right? Well, not these ones because I have an extra thing of hemostatic gauze, again, chida gauze, and this is North American Rescue gauze in a vacuum sealed container. So it pushes up on the magazine so it's easier to get them out. So just like so, I actually have a good amount to grab them. A little bit of electrical tape just to kind of deaden the sound a little bit so it's not clinking together all that much. So I have the hemostatic up front because it's the easiest one to reach and this one will, this mag will probably be empty uh, after the first few, uh, few minutes. So someone might be hit, including myself, so I might need extra hemostatic gauze. I might not even be able to reach um, my little eye fact so I can actually pack whatever wound I have uh, with that gauze and uh, get started on stuff obviously it has to stay mobile and you know, and put pressure on it and you know whatever but I can get started and then of course plain old gauze is still good too you don't always need hemostatic gauze but hemostatic gauze obviously will work faster and depending on the situation it can make a difference so with these two I'll just pull this one out first, and here we go. So here I just have more gauze. This is just in another vacuum seal container. This is H&H &H gauze. So yeah, pretty simple. Just good plain old gauze, pushing the magazines up on the uh, firing side, but I can still reach this. That's why I want the gauze here. So, yeah. And of course the pistol. And then here I have the old school field dressing. So this is the uh, one with the green tails on it that is like cheesecloth with the old school bandage and everything. Uh, stuff that you saw in World War uh, World War One, World War Two, Vietnam. You know, even until recently before the Israeli bandage really became the thing. 
So these are still good, uh, like for face wounds or anything you don't need a pressure dressing on. Obviously the Israeli bandages are really good for using one-handed and that's why I have one with me, but you know, these things are still useful. And uh, this is good for pushing up, you know, my magazine and making it easier to draw it. And I still have a bandage that can be used. Now, uh, bandaging something isn't really going to be as high of a priority as, uh, like, if, if things are really bad, you're not going to grab a bandage. You're going to grab gauze, you're going to stuff the wound with something, or you're going to use a tourniquet. Uh, the old school way of taking care of bleach was just to put a bandage over and do like digital pressure or manual pressure or something like that. That's not really how it works anymore. Uh, you know, experience has taught us that that's not the way you take care of severe hemorrhaging, which is the number one cause of cause of death. Other than and then of course you also have uh, like sucking chest wounds and stuff like that. So, anyways, uh, with all that said, I appreciate you guys watching. That's pretty much uh, what I have on my person. It's not all that much. I am listening. I'm. I am missing, not listening, uh, I'm missing like a nasal pharyngeal airway, which um, I'm not really missing because if I actually need one of those, then I'm probably in more dire straits and I probably have lost consciousness because that's usually when those are inserted. Uh, unless you have like severe facial trauma, like your mouth just got shot off or your face just got shot off or whatever. Uh, but anyways... You know, that's one of the things I'm missing, but, you know, whatever. It's it's up to you guys what you want to carry. Uh, so, it's just an example of what I have. So, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and you guys have a good one.